So there's a new player in town. I bet you have already heard about the hype or the news that there is a new method of stretching in Pixinside or available in Pixinside and it's called Verilux Hypermetric Stretch and I have given it a try and I figured why not make a small video of my kind of initial thoughts about this stretch because or this method because it's uh, pretty good actually um, it's basically just drag and drop so what I do is when I take an image I spend like hours and hours of uh, post-processing time I spend a lot of time and making a lot of versions and just revisiting the data and try other things and learn new stuff and you know kind of take pride in what I do in the craft that I do the post-processing of the astrophotography but uh, thing is that the stretching has always been like a center part of this process and I've been using uh, general hypermetric stretch uh, GHS and it's uh, it's simply awesome it's it gives me full control and I can do whatever I want when I'm stretching out the image so when this uh, new method came out for me new method came out which is basically just drag and drop um, I wanted to see the results and to uh, compare the results a little bit is this as good as i say or is my old workflow ghs better so let's dive into the computer and let me show you my findings uh, these are again my initial results um, so let's go ahead and have a look uh, okay so we are in Pixinsight and I just want to make a small note here that uh, this new script is uh, more for color imaging I do however mostly shoot in monochrome I have a new uh, camera as well it's sitting next to me on the desk which is a um, 2600 MC it's a one-shot color camera so uh, but I don't have I haven't had time to use it that much I don't have much uh, color images so I'm going to show you guys an HSO image of the soul nebula that I took from my borderline balcony a few months ago and we have the sulfur the hydrogen and the oxygen here and they are finished they have they are north exterminated they are blur exterminated but they are not stretched I also have the finished stretched image here I'm going where I can compare these two because I will basically just do some drag and drop and create this image as fast as possible um, and compare it to my hours and hours of post-processing uh, let's see like what the difference is or what what am I gaining from this um, so basically I start with the oxygen layer and I just go to script uh, VHS porting and Verilux Hyperbex stretch now what I do is I auto calculate the log D and I press process so again drag and drop I am not doing anything else I'm just letting the script do all the job for me and decide whatever stretching needs to be done on this image and I'm just gonna leave it to that so as you can see it takes a little bit of a while to finish especially when it's stuck at 99% but boom, there you are there is the Verilux oxygen and I gotta say I am pretty impressed with this uh, you can clearly see the oxygen here and can see that there's a bit of light pollution um, but that's my life in with the oxygen filter in by borderline area let's uh, again do the same thing for the hydrogen again auto calculate log D and process nothing more it moves pretty fast to 99% and then it stays there for a little while um, I guess this could be done a little bit better in the future of the people making this maybe Ricardo I can't see what the name is there I don't have enough good enough eyes so I can pretty quickly see on the hydrogen layer that uh, it's a bit too dark for me so 
just by dragging and dropping this one is not good enough but it's okay i mean it is pretty clear that it's good at bringing out details and bringing out the data but doesn't do much of a good job on the this hydrogen sub for the background it gets too dark i would like to see it more like the oxygen part so let's take the last one which is the sulfur and uh, do a auto log d and to target the background i would probably or i would have used this slider to uh, compensate for the very very dark background in the hydrogen but for the purpose of this video i'm only taking the drag and drop part because that's what you're going to do as a beginner so i'm going to compare my years of experience with doing stretching and using a complex or a very fine-tuned stretching method versus this drag and drop method so there we are the sulfur is done um, which is better than the oxygen honestly uh, oh sorry which is better than the hydrogen so for me i think that the sulfur layer has uh, been stretched the best but uh, let's go ahead and combine these images into a uh, complete hso image i mean every beginner can do this so this is exactly what we're gonna do here as well i just call this vera lux sulfur uh, call this uh, oh no that's not what i wanted to do uh, i call this verilux hydrogen and this one let's call it verilux oxygen and then i'll just go to pixel math and i've got to put the sulfur in the red the hydrogen in the green and the oxygen in the blue i'm going to create a new image which is an rgb color image and apply and there you have it boom you could say that this is a finished image at this point um pretty decent job for just to drag and drop there i haven't done anything on it and still i'm getting a pretty good image uh, you can clearly see the beautiful details in this nebulosity and you can see all of this uh, filaments coming out from it uh, or like the pillars um, so yeah i mean just out of the box decent work there is a lot of weird colors in the darker parts uh, which uh, basically is because of the hydrogen not being stretched uh, properly i guess uh, i think it's a little bit on the magenta side so a little bit more green or hydrogen would have compensated for that creating a better background but uh, let's just run it through my uh, um, where are you network narrowband normalization tool as well um, just to see if i can bring out the data a little bit more uh, just doing a little bit of scnr to remove the greens which is not my favorite way of doing it but still boosting the o2 is always nice and then just a little tad of s2 boosting as well and apply So there we are, a finished HSO image of the Sol Nebula, done in what, like five minutes or something. So this is a pretty good tool for the beginners at this point. Um, I personally uh, would like to do more with this image, of course, but for just a simple drag and drop, this image is very well made um, but again for comparison i do have my hours and hours of data and it's actually starless 
So let me just remove the stars from this one as well for a more reasonable comparison. Uh, yeah, I think uh, personally, and I've tried it on a lot of uh, subs, this method. I've just wanted to see if this was uh, something that was uh, made for uh, only this uh, image or this particular data set, or if it behaves uh, identically uh, on other data sets as well. And yeah, for me, the the behavior is identical. It does the same thing for all the images that I've tried, but look at this beauty. I mean, this is pretty good for a quick drag and drop five minutes stretched and just put together and normalized a little bit. This is like, I haven't done anything on it and still I'm getting this image. Uh, but again, for comparison, if I would have taken my time and done this manually, I would, I ended up with this image. So this is a little bit more data. Um, it's brighter, which is the part that I uh, was talking a lot about uh, before. I feel that all the images that are done in auto stretch are not bright enough. Their data isn't pulled out properly. There is more data to get from this uh, from this uh, data set and uh, Verilux uh, doesn't really do the job properly. Um, let me just put this side by side so we can more properly see the difference here. You can clearly see that there is way more data in my processed image. The colors are a little bit better, although I am digging the colors on the Verilux version as well. They might got a little bit better, uh, honestly, but they're not bright enough. And the background, you can clearly see that the background in my image is better um, than this one. But uh, detail-wise, let me just go into the... Wait, go away. Let me just go into the details here. Um, uh, not much difference. There is, of course, Again, more data. You can see the jets here of, of gas jets or whatever these are coming out here and they are not really visible on this image here. Maybe a little bit, but still um, not good enough for my purposes. But uh, for the sake of hours and hours of post-processing, this is a really cool tool. I think it really has potential and I will probably use it in my future workflow, try to integrate it somehow, maybe use it as a baseline on how I would like my image to at least start looking at. I have tried to double stretch the image to bring it, bring up the data even more, but it really, I haven't succeeded properly in it, but with more work, maybe I'll do better in the future. As I said, this is just initial work. I know that the data is more, or the, the Verilux uh, stretch here is uh, more for color images and I'm using it on narrowband. But uh, still, it's fun to try. So if you're a complete beginner and really don't know what you're doing, this is a very powerful tool for you to start with. It's going to make your images way better and I would highly recommend you guys to install it and try it. I guess it's on the, well, it is on Pixinsight and uh, I think it's on Serial as well, which is a free tool. So yeah, go ahead and download it and try it and give it a shot and hope you'll get uh, good images and clear skies. I have only had clouds for uh, one and a half month right now in my life in Sweden, but it is what it is. And I'll see you in the next video. All right. Bye-bye for now.